So I'm on uh, code signal uh, are similar and struggling with uh, a problem and it's comparing two arrays and so uh, it's not just are they the same so I am checking to see if one array is the same as the other array and in Python you can make, do it that sim simply um, and so I'll, I'll answer this in Python and then I'll switch it over to Java and explain how you do it there too um, but if they're the same right away we then it's true so that's true um, however you can do some swaps and so you can uh, if you were to um, so there's an even number of twos an even number of ones and an even number of threes you can move these things around and uh, uh, and get the same so in this one uh, I can't swap any of the elements to rearrange it they don't have the actual same contents and so this is limited because it checks that they're in the literal same order um, and it's not comparing the contents um, and the contents have to be the same with a limit of only one uh, swap uh, at most one pair of elements in one of the arrays so if we're going to find the cases in which they are similar, then we'll return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. I can't simply return a comparison because um, uh, there are going to be different situations I need to test. So what I want to do is just run a loop uh, through one of the first one and try every possible swap and check if ever it becomes equal to b um, when it, if it does then um, stop and return true otherwise if i get through that the every uh, possibility and find that i haven't found couldn't make them similar then i'll return false after the loop so in python you can set up this loop in a couple different ways um, and um, I just ordered a couple more books because I Python has some cool rules and some they call it the Pythonic approach and so they uh, it, it it's elegant but it's not as literal and as familiar to me so I want to read up a little bit more about how Python does it in particular um, but one of the ways you can write a loop is for um, some sort of uh, I, I can usually do X but given that for x in a is a little bit struck uh, uh, so I just like to write it sample so this is sampling all of the numbers in a um, and it'll go through each one and the problem is is I want to compare it um, to the one that's right above it um, or swap so if I'm going through and sample becomes uh, one Right away I want to then try to swap it with the item that's next to it or every other one and the problem there is that I need to uh, I, I won't have the address right here this is actually literally becoming one two and not um, if I did like for X in range of the length of a um, so if I said all right look up the length of a it's three um, and go through a range from zero up to but not including that length so it'll be zero one two and this would now be uh, I or is our the index um, and so it'll be zero one two and then I can say hey um, um, a at position I um, and so I can access this uh, element in the list and I could and I could also uh, access an, it, an element above it or below it um, uh, or I could make sure that uh, if I was doing another nested loop I could make sure that I doesn't so if I did another loop like this and so I wanted uh, for I and I call this Y for instance then I could say um, if I doesn't equal y um, 
And that means that I could run another scan underneath this one and compare and that I could make sure that I'm not uh, comparing the same number if I made another loop through this A uh, and just so I could target and make swaps. I could make sure that they don't, the address doesn't uh, equal the same thing. And then I can perform a uh, three part swap. No, and actually, there's a much more elegant way to do a three part swap in Python. You just list two elements that you want to set, and then you set them, comma, so you do a compound assignment statement. That's, that's just awesome. So you can just say A at I. Uh, and a at y is now a at so I just inverted it doesn't matter what order because as long as the next one is in the opposite order they all swap um, because now these two this is overlaying on those it's beautiful Python uh, so three part swap Python style uh, my uh, Java programmers we have uh, like a three-part swap that we have to practice and practice and so uh, this is just so much more elegant so now after making one of these swaps um, I need to check to see if um, uh, if they're now the same so um, if a equals B at this point after the swap uh, we should um, return true and so I, um, just make it easier to read. I want to get in a good habit. Uh, so if A equals B, then return true. Um, so yeah, it'll keep on making all of the possible swaps. And otherwise, if they at any point become true, return true. Otherwise, if I get through it all, return false. How does it work? No. So 8 out of 10 tests passed. So my extreme cases aren't catching. So what am I missing here? So this is the case where I have an additional, I'm making multiple swaps. So this is trying every possible situation and thus it's not, um, I'm not limiting. So I had to make two swaps to make it similar um, and I'm not keeping account. So each time, I make a swap and I just need to keep account going hmm no okay the problem here I think is actually that I'm leaving the swap each time I want to start from a new fresh copy of uh, yeah all right so I make a copy of a each time and so that way the swaps aren't uh, being aren't persisted. I'm redeclaring that uh, variable each time and then I'm making a swap and then so I need to compare a copy uh, to that. Um, then it's true. So that way it's refreshed. How about now? Does that pass? Womp womp. Okay, so here's the here's the deal. My a copy is actually not a copy, and I think I was assuming I had to Google around. I was assuming too much of Python. I was getting carried away. This is doing the same thing that it would do in Java, in that uh, because they're both references to uh, heat memory and the uh, the variable exists in stack memory, but they're both pointing to the same place. I'm not actually making a fresh copy of it over to A. I'm just setting the pointer where A it uh, the collection is set up in memory. I'm just giving it the same pointer, so they both go to the same uh, destination. But of course, Python does have a simple solution to that you just make the copy uh, and save it there. So now if I run the tests, um, let's see how this does. Um, oh, oh, because I was running tests. I was just goofing around up here. Oh, no, sorry, that's... All right, there we go. Got that. Whoa, but no, it doesn't count. Um, so there was a hidden test and it must have been a massive collection and because I'm copying and I'm making these swaps 
Um, maybe there's uh, a much more efficient way of doing this that I'm missing. And as a result, it, uh, it doesn't complete in time. And so, huh. And I can unlock the hidden test at, for 31, so I have 80,000 gold. I can unlock the hidden test for like a, a, almost half mine. But, uh, but I could also, you can look up the answer for like way less. So I'm tempted to do that and figure out uh, what an alternate solution is. You can Google it, but I don't know. I just feel like, um, thumbs up, up this question. Uh, I feel like that's, um, that's more cheating than paying for it uh, built into the game. Yeah, you can go over to solutions and you can reveal it. So I'm almost out of time on my recording. So I'm, I'm only 200. So yeah. So let's look it up. Now I can see the most highly rated Python 3 answer. What do we look like? See, <laughs> it's always like one line of code. Oh, every time, every time. So we get a collections uh, library and we're using a counter here. Let's. I noticed this before. They're changing the variables to all caps. I wonder why they do that. This is why I just ordered this book. Um, because, because there's a lot of mechanics here that, that I just don't understand. And it's, I know it's super Pythonic, but I sort of thought Pythonic meant that it's literal reading. And so this is becoming more obscure and, Anyway, anyway, uh, I'm being nitpicky, but I want to study it, so I'll uh, get my head around it a little bit better. This uh, guy, Tom, spells it out in a little bit different of a way, and I like this. Um, so he's looping through all of the indexes of A, and he said, and while he's going through, and he's he's comparing the spot uh, of the counter from A to its match in B, and if it doesn't match, he's adding the item itself so he's keeping it in the brackets so it's like that cubby he's just attaching it onto the c list and so this c becomes a collection of all of the uh, mismatches and then so if if already you have more than two mismatches then return or fault if there were no mismatches then return true but i think this is um overkill because you already did that up here so the next thing he checks is that if there's if you were to make this swap so get this one he's well what's he putting in these brackets oh right he added the index of the location so i mean of uh the mismatch not the actual value so this is looking up the index. So if you were to get the index of one and compare it to the other, it should be the same. That's clever. Uh, that's a good idea. There's some interesting Java uh, answers here as well. Um, so you return a, a true or false. On, are they similar? And you have two in arrays. Um, and then we declare a couple uh, RS, S1, and S2. That is such a clever way of recording the, the value at that location. You set it equal to 1, and then you just multiply it by whatever that is. It's an elegant way of quickly writing down the value, because it's just multiplied by 1. So it's... That's, I've never seen that before. I mean, it makes so much sense. So it's a very similar process as the last uh, Python answer. If they don't equal each other, keep the counter of how many mismatches we found. And if it equals two and uh, the, other, the two mismatches equal each other, then you could swap. And um, yeah, this is a, a really tidy answer. If you made it to the end of this explanation, good for you. That's, that's excellent work. Uh, but this is how you warm up.